Bonjour à tous. Hi, everybody. Just give me just a second. I'm trying to put this in the um, Facebook page as well. And turn my other stuff up. Off. Oh. Sorry, I've been a little bit behind because I was working on something. Hi, Rika. Ahmed, hello. Hi, Brenda. Uh, I've been working on something and then I realized that it was missing one video clip and then it took me like an hour and a half to find it in the computer because I had saved it where I normally don't. So, okay, goodness, what a horrible speed. Absolutely horrible. Let me try and uh, get a little bit better. There's not much I can do. It's the, the pure. Hi, Karin. Bonsoir, Karin. Hi, Colleen. Bonsoir, Katia. So we will make a steampunk heart pendant and as I said we need just um, goodness, this is hard. just uh, scrap clay preferably in a mud or in a um, greenish color I soil it yeah, I have no idea what's going on. It's just YouTube. The internet has been crazy today. All kinds of crazy. Really. Let me try and change the sound to the other camera. I might even have to change the camera completely. Can you hear me better now? I can just change the camera completely. Tell me if you hear me better. Okay, so it's the camera. And the image is better too. I have no idea what's going on but uh, anyway so why I said that uh, it's better to have a uh, mud or greenish because that's when you can do the uh, full metal the best now let me say it in French real quick pourquoi je dis qu'on a besoin du pâte burk sur le marron ou euh, gris ou vert parce que c'est euh, mieux pour obtenir un euh, effet métallique. Just because, uh, generally speaking, the, the antiquing is pretty much like the scrap clay. That's like the mud clay. Parce que précisément le... Euh, L'effet métallique, l'oxydisation est beaucoup comme le, la pâte burk. So, I have this on the thickest setting. And I am actually going to double it. Donc, ceci est sur le plus épais. Et je vais le doubler. And make sure that it's really flat. Now, you can use a cutter, but I'm going to do this without a cutter. Vous pouvez utiliser une importe pièce, mais maintenant je vais utiliser uh, simplement une lame à couper. And you see I have some cling wrap because I want to get a nice uh, 
uh, Edge. Bonsoir, Cecil. Bonsoir, Sophie. So, just because you don't have a uh, cutter doesn't mean that you cannot get nice edges with the clean wrap. So, let's do pretty much a um, art like cut. And we will do a wonky car part, not a super pretty one. Donc on va faire une, un de ces cœurs qui sont super symétriques et tout ça. And now let's just pretty much draw. No, not a good idea to draw directly with the exacto knife. The wheel will make it really, really wonky. Pretty much like this. And then I'm going to go with the exacto knife. The cable of the camera is down here. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So pretty much. Now we go and we really do the cut. Not on the blade part, but on this part. And remember to remove something that you've cut, just do the an opening and it will be much easier to remove. And then we finish cutting here. Yeah, there's a bad weather in my area. Hi, Teresa. And the wind is blowing like crazy. Let me get this out of the way for now. And grab something to work on. I know it doesn't look too pretty right now, but we shall refine it. So the best is to put it on something that you can move around. And now let's just refine the cut a little bit. and work some more on the edges. And the cling wrap helps, but you can refine it some more. And of course, you can just use a cookie cutter if you want. Donc, si vous voulez utiliser une emporte-pièce, vous pouvez l'utiliser, mais moi, j'ai pensé que si on fait du steampunk, alors on voit quelque chose d'un peu plus... Uh, pas si normal et standard et ordinaire. Just because we are doing the steampunk thing, we kind of want something that's not middle of the road. That's why I chose not to use a cookie cutter. 
No, don't worry about the these. We will fix them the last. Hi, Angel. Hi, Lawrence. So now we have some pretty nice edges. And what do we want to do first? Do we want to make it look like it's made out of metal and or leather, right? And uh, excuse me if sometimes I go like this, for some reason the Hangouts mirrors my camera. I mean, I see it mirrored, so that's why I have the tendency to go the other way, because this is my right. But on the camera, on what I see, this is the left. So <laughs> that's why it throws me off. Now, let's do first a stripe of metal. To make it like it were cracked. And so we shall make believe that this heart is made out of pieces. Donc on va faire de telle sorte que le cœur va être comme s'il était fait de plusieurs pièces. So generally speaking, let's kind of try and um, divide it. Let's do this part metal, then this part leather, and this part again metal. So if we go metal on here, we will need some kind of pattern, metallic pattern right here right so i cannot use the one that's on the exacto knife because as you can see it's all covered i covered it with stuff but you can use that and i know that i have something that had yeah i have something that say, has the same type of pattern see this sculpting tool that's my favorite and you can use Again, the stuff on your exacto knife, or if you have this type of tool, or anything that would have uh, this specific type of pattern. Mine has all kinds of crap on it, too, because I'm using it. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sandra. Uh, let me get the camera a little closer. Focused up so you can see what kind of pattern I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this. Okay, let me see. Is it better like this? Do you see better like this? What's going on? Okay. So I'm going to use this to make a little bit of a pattern here. And you'll see, I'll get it closer and you'll see that it looks very metal-like. Let me get this back. Okay. See? It looks very something metal. Yeah, that's for fish scales too. That works for fish scales too, but it works very good. Works very good for metal like stuff. Now, for the leather part, that would be this. If you have very wrinkly hands, not wrinkly, but with a lot of lines, you see, you can use that to make a pattern. You can use that. And it will make a fairly leathery like pattern. Bonsoir, Marie. Donc, si vous avez, uh, si vos pommes ont beaucoup de lignes, vous pouvez utiliser ça pour faire uh, ressembler le cuir. Je sais. Vous voyez? Can you see? Because I have a lot of lines in the palm of my hand. If you don't have that, then you can use a, um, uh, what you call it, a crumpled um, cling wrap or a crumpled aluminum foil. 
to make this kind of things. Now, for the second part the, with, that has metallic, I am sure that if you look around you, you will find a lot of, at least somewhere, this, on something. Non, pour la troisième euh, portion qui a du métal, je suis sûr que vous avez quelque chose comme ça. Hi, Carrie. Autour de vous, quelque part. Donc, vous pouvez utiliser ça pour le deuxième, la, deux, la, la deuxième partie de métal. So, you can use this to make another metallic pattern and there we go we have another metallic pattern and now we are going to put this together first we will need something here and we will get a piece of scrap clay again And we shall put it right here. And cut it at the base here. Then let's take a wider piece. Bonsoir, Annie. Uh, I will take a wider piece. Donc, je prends deux pièces de Pat Burke sur la uh, plus mince épaisseur. Et je mets, mets une qui ici. Et ensuite, je vais mettre un ici. And that one, I put it... Okay, it needs a straight edge. I'm going to put it here between the so-called leather and the second metal. So what I want to show you is that you don't necessarily need all those watch parts and expensive stuff that you need to buy to make something that looks steampunkish. Okay? Now, let's place some screws here. Maintenant, on va mettre ici des screws. I'm not sure if that, je ne sais pas si c'est ça le mot. Cécile, j'ai besoin d'aide. I don't know if that's the word for screws in French. If I didn't forget it completely. So we need about four. Donc on a besoin d'environ quatre de. And this will be just little dots. Oh God, it's getting so hot here. We have a very Stormy weather. I know it's January, but southeast of me there's tornadoes. Well, bis, oui. C'est ça. C'est ce que je vais faire ici. Now try and make them round. I know I have some issues with round because remember I have an issue with the pinching part. My hands don't work very well when it comes to pinching. Now, of course, you can use just a screwdriver, but you can do it just with your exacto knife or whatever sculpting tool you have. I'm going to use this and let me make this and get this closer. And you can, where's my thing? You can flatten it a little bit. And then I'll use my little sculpting tool and I will make little screw. 
pose and not on all of them some of them i will leave let me get this more focused so it wouldn't go away some of them i will leave straight and make sure you don't make them with the this little sign all the same going the same way because that looks bad okay now we have some screws here i know it doesn't look like much but you'll see once we start putting the mica powder on it it's going to look absolutely gorgeous now on this one let's do some stitching and you need your needle tool and first of all you do some pokes but try to make them equal they don't have to be too close to each other just try to make them quite equal And then drag a thin line to unite them. Just very thin, don't get too... And you can make it a little bit not perfectly straight. Pretty much it has to be straight between the holes. To look like a real machine stitching. Now here, let's put a stud or two. I don't know how to say stud in French. Please, Cecile, help me. So to make a stud, we need a little pyramid-like thingy. And just place it on here. And of course you can place, oh, this is too big, let's cut one, but I need to refocus the camera in just a second. I'm going to actually cut it out, because we need a much smaller one than what I can do with my not wanting to pinch hands. And I'm cut it too much. Okay, this is not good. All right, let's try again. Sorry, I cannot see that far. Donc, uh, Cécile va m'essayer un peu parce que lorsque je remove mes uh, lunettes, je ne vois plus le, le la discussion. Donc, je ne vois pas ce que vous dites. Donc, elle va m'aider en traduisant pour les, parce que elle est gentille comme ça. So, what I'm trying to do is here is to, and I cannot see a darn thing of what I'm doing, is to cut out a little pyramid shape. And then we shall place it right here. And this will be a stud. And then, of course, you can place rhinestones and all kinds of other things. Now, let's make a little gear. Again, we need a 
sheet of um, clay on the thinner setting. And we can grab whatever you have that's round but not very big. Okay? So I have this. Uh, you can get the pencil. I have this thing from the cane benders. And I have no room because of the camera, so I'm going to try and make it here. So, grab it here. You can use a pencil to trace. Because I presume you don't have all kinds of... So, remember that I'm trying in this to, in the lives, to do stuff without using a lot of materials that have to be bought. Those are for the regular tutorials. But here we pretend that we don't have a lot of stuff. And as for the mica powders, you can always replace them with cheapo shimmering eyeshadow. It works just fine. If you don't have all the mica powders. You can buy that or buck or two at any dollar store, and I'm sure that you can find that kind of stuff in France, Europe in general, too. Because I know Europe is full of Chinese stuff as well. Okay, now that we got this cut, and I'll show you on this, works the best. But I'm going to have to remove my eyeglasses again to see what I'm doing. So we have an approximately round shape here that we can refine some more. Now, go pretty much like opposite sides with the little cut. And then again. And now what you do, you just cut in between. You can do the cuts more close to each other if you want. To have more spokes to the gear. I'm just showing you how to make one, and it's very uncomfortable for me because of the position. And um, I almost didn't have the this live today again because I'm still not completely recovered from that rib injury. So if I suddenly say, hold on, I need to move, <laughs> that means that I'm hurting and I need to move. Because I uh, lifted more than I was supposed to. And I messed up some stuff. So we can use this as a gear or you can make a more, a better one. Uh, another thing to use, if you want to make a lot of steampunk, I'll show you. It's the Makings um, Extra Plate. There's actually a full set that's called Gears. And let me get them all out so I can show you. So you have eyelets, you have actual gears and wheels and screws. Hold on, let me find the screws. And you can use that in steampunk. And you can use that if you want to do steampunk. And I'll get them closer and separate it to the camera. Let's see, this one has screws. Let me try and focus it better. 
This one has screws, and the thing with the makings is that they are uh, what's called inny and outy, so you can get imprints in, and also you can leave them out. So this is the screws, and it has eyelets. And then it has little gears. And actually, these ones, whenever, and the other ones, the, the other gears, whenever you make Mokumegane, not Mokumegane, the hidden magic, they look like flowers. And here's another gear. And of course, you have the more expensive Visapa Velka one, but um, I will show you how you can actually use this to make little screws and stuff. It's almost like a, almost like a, an inverse Sutton slice. Because what you do, you get yourself some clay, and then you get it through the pasta machine. But this time you need, you want it on thick. And then you just use the outy part. So you want to have the screws coming out of the clay. See, like this. And then you pretty much use, like for a mica shift shaving, only that you're trying to remove just the screw part. And this works also for the Lisa Pavelka thing. See, you got the screw that you can force place there on the little heart. And you can do that for the gears as well. Or you can just use the texture itself on the little heart if you want. And uh, let's do, let's sculpt the nitty bitty keyhole. Because I think that's nice. And especially if you have a little key, that would help to attach and you can call it key to my heart and you can do this with the ball stylus or as you can see i'm using just a pencil And we got the keyhole. And now comes the fun part. Now let's do some coloring with mica. That's always fun, isn't it? And I don't know why this camera is going nuts. Okay, let me catch up with the chat because I have the camera control over the chat. Um, I don't know. Soyla is in Canada, Angel. So she can tell you where where she got it from. Merci, Cecile. Okay, let me go grab the mica. And I would use the, the shadow, eyeshadow, but I don't have enough. Sorry. So I'm going to use some old silver. Manti Chromes. Okay. 
I have to find this. Okay. So I know some very old mica powders here, but I'm going to use first some of the antique silver thingy. And I grab the silver, not the antique silver. Yeah, they, they look pretty much the same in the bottle, but when you place them on, they look different. So I'm going first to place some antique silver. And I'm going to use it on this area, including the um, strip. And you can see it's a darker. So if you have an eyeshadow, anything that would be like a dark gray. You see, it's fairly dark. And then you can come back and I'll show you how to use acrylic on this to antique it before you put it in the oven. Okay, so we did this, and now we are going to use a little bit of tape to lift what's on the top, as soon as I can find my tape, which might be in the kitchen, just a second. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of tape and just lift off what's on the very top. I don't want to lift off everything, just what's on the very top so I can come in with the, the regular silver and do some highlights. Okay. Now... Use your pants and rub this on so you can rub off all the, I was joking, you can use a, a paper towel. And now grab on some silver and this time use your finger and just rub on the what's raised. See how this one is more shiny? It does look the same though in the bottle. I'll show you. It's a dull gray. See? And actually the antique silver looks pretty much brown. But neither of them looks properly silver. Bonsoir, Sylvie. Now, let's go on this and let's work a little bit of copper in it. So I'm going to get some antique bronze. Now, if you want to do it, I'll show you how to do it uh, with oxidization. But for now, I'm going to take some antique bronze. So that would be a brown eyeshadow. And I'm going to get it in. Don't get it on the leather, okay? And again, wipe your brush. And let's get some tape and remove the excess. 
the same as with the other one. And see how it's left only in the recesses. Okay, let me fix the camera again. Okay, it's pretty much in the recesses and it will look like oxidized copper. And now we get the copper and this would be like a reddish shimmer eyeshadow. As long as you get uh, something that's called for the blondes, summer for the blondes, that would have a whole bunch of coppers and browns that are all shimmery, you're set. And again, we go pretty much on the raised surfaces. And we go also on the sides because it's prettier. Now comes the, the biggest part. Here on the leather, you can use the um, a, a regular brown that's not very shimmery. If you have the, and I'm going to give you this trick. If you have the Jacquard Perlex uh, shade Minx, the Minx gives the best leather imitation ever. Let me grab it. Just a second, I need to. Just grabbing, grabbing other stuff. There we go. So the mink is the one that's going to give you the perfect leather look. See how it's got a little bit of a chameleon type thing. See? Oh, it's a duo color, pretty much. But it gives a beautiful leather look. Like worked leather. You know that leather that they make to look a little bit metallic -y? That's exactly that look that it gives. And you don't want to go all over it, just in spots. Because you already have the brown, brownish, uh, whatchamacallit, the brownish uh, clay that already looks a little bit like leather. And then let's just put some pure silverish look on the stud. And then we'll get on to antiquing. The what? Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Debra. Hi, Carol. I'm not really watching. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not really watching the chat too much because I got Cecile there, who's my assistant today. So try to get this on the stud. Then this is white pearl, by the way. But if you have a pretty silver, you can use that. And actually, this one you can just do it with acrylic paint. You don't really have to worry too much about the mica. So this is the look we got now. And then we can use all kinds of little chains. But in a minute, let's first do the acrylic part. Let me gather all my micas from here. Making.
Okay, so I'm going to use a very dark thing that's almost black. This is called black green. And then a uh, green. A uh, grayish green. It's called green mist. And what I'm going to do, if you remember that tutorial that I told you, it was with the special effects with acrylics and uh, mica. But I told you that if you douse a lot of mica powder on something that is textured, and then uh, I think I did it on the Dwina necklace, the cosplay necklace, and then you apply a wash of acrylic over it, it will settle only in the recesses because the mica powder will act as a repellent. So let me grab a little bit of water. And what I will want to do, remember, it has to be a wash. That means very diluted acrylic paint. So I'm going to put the light green on the copper and the darker thing, almost black, on the silver. So I'm going to take a little bit and actually make a wash out of it. And you can use your lid for that or the side of your water thingy and just dab it in there. If it doesn't settle in the recesses, it's got too much color and not enough water. And you can, of course, dab it with some paper to remove the excess. And see how you're left with something that looks like pure patina. Okay. Now let's do the dark thing. I'm sorry, Carrie. Okay, now the dark color. And again, we need a wash. And we'll do the exact same thing. Make it in a pretty much in a wash. And then apply in it. And if it doesn't settle in the recesses, that means it's too much color. So get a lot more water on it. And then dab it with the... And see, now it looks like oxidized silver. Let me fix the camera. See, and then let's put some also on the screws because we need that to look oxidized as well. Try not to get any on the leather part. And there we go. Let me fix the camera again. So you can see better. See how now it looks like it's something very old made out of pieces. Oh, je, je suis désolé, Cécile. Donc, euh, vous voyez qu'on peut faire seulement avec des, euh, des poudres mica ou de maquillage et de l'acrylique. On peut faire une pièce qui euh, a l'aspect de, de quelque chose de très vieux. Wait 
Donc, j'ai montré cette technique en utilisant des poudres mica et de l'acrylique euh, dans un de mes tutoriels et aussi dans le, le tutoriel sur le, le petit collier cosplay. So, now we can uh, add some chains and other things that you might want. Let me fix my camera again. And I have here, this is my jar of bits and pieces. Whatever I put together, jewelry, whatever I'm left with, I throw in here. And I know that I have a few pieces of chain. Because it's too much to go back to the drawer and put this where it belongs. You know, so I just throw it in this little jar and then about once a month I clean it. So I have a little piece of chain here. And a little piece of chain, and what else? Some rings. And this is too big. If this was smaller, I'd have put it in there, but it's too big. So this can go back. And let's place the chain. Where to, where to? Let's place it here. I want it to go in a little bit so it wouldn't come out that easily. If it's frustrating for you, imagine how frustrating it is for me. Okay, so cram it in there and then place this back on. And let's bring it down and then cram it somewhere in here. And there you go. And here, as I said, you can put all kinds of other things. If you have little charms, you can place those on. Let me check if I have any little charms going around. Because steampunk doesn't necessarily mean gears and watch parts and all kinds of stuff. I have a little box with all kinds of findings and pieces of all kinds of sorts. Okay, this looks like a washer. I actually have a watch, an old watch. This looks good. And I'm sure that all of you have this kind of stuff playing around the house. Donc, vous mettez n'importe quelle petite pièce qui donnera un peu plus de dame, si vous voulez, à votre petite cœur. And so I see even have little gears, but I said I'm not going to use these. I even have little gears, but I'm not going to use it. I'm just using bits and pieces of findings. Okay. So, let's place, I'm not even, I might not even use all of them. Let's place this one here. And this one you might have, once it's baked, you might have to take it out and glue it, okay? Because it's not going to. Bonsoir, Brigitte. Donc, celui-ci, vous... Uh, 
il est possible que vous allez avoir besoin de le coller après que vous cuissez la pâte parce qu'il ne peut pas rester comme ça. Donc, il va avoir besoin d'être collé. And then, let's put this washer here. And the washer too will need glued, probably. And I think I'm not going to use this because it looks steampunkish enough. Let's see. So all you need to do is to put one of those screw bales or you can use a jump ring in it. And you have a nice steampunk thing. And of course, before baking it, make sure that you, that's why I told you there's no reason to clean these first because if you press these in, it's going to distort the edge. But before placing it in the oven, definitely clean the and smooth the edges and if you decide to use some alcohol to smooth the edges uh, make sure that you place some uh, mica powder back on because the alcohol will remove it but you can clean it nicely and then bake it but there you go this is pretty much it Donc, euh, nettoyer les... Euh, euh, comment est-ce qu'on dit ça? Les, les bouts. Et si vous utilisez de l'alcool pour les nettoyer, vous allez de, euh, devoir remettre le, la poudre mica parce que l'alcool va l'enlever. Mais c'est voilà, vous n'avez pas besoin nécessairement de, euh, de partie de d'horloge ou de choses comme ça ou de you don't really need all kinds of swellgant and other kinds of things to make things look like they are antique and and remember I have a video that uh, teaches you how to do patina very nice patina using just acrylics Okay, so thank you everybody and I hope you liked the little steampunk art. I will do a, a larger tutorial on this, but uh, sometime after Valentine's Day. So that's why I thought that you might want to do something like this for Valentine's. And see this one, you can actually put the bail here, not here, because it would be nicely balanced if you make it whimsical like this. Huh? <laughs> oui, c'est pas de discussion. C'est vrai. Donc, euh, je vais faire un autre tuto sur le steampunk, mais après euh, le Valentin, le saint Valentin. Donc, j'ai voulu vous montrer comment faire une petite cœur en steampunk sans avoir besoin de toute chose de... Euh, toutes choses chères. Donc, j'espère que vous avez aimé. Euh, un bon dimanche. Je vais vous voir le, le dimanche prochain. Thank you. And I'll see you next Sunday. I hope everything works well. Have a great day. I'm sorry. Oh, but I hope you'll have fun, Angel. Okay, everybody have a great uh, remaining of the Sunday and a great week to come. Merci beaucoup et j'espère que vous avez un bon dimanche. Ce qu'il reste de, du dimanche et une, uh, une bonne semaine à venir. Et je vais vous voir la semaine prochaine. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and week. Goodbye.